uh, colleagues, I was not present at session yesterday uh, because I was home dealing with the uh, funeral arrangements for my aunt. It's always hard to talk about somebody that you've lost, that you love, especially the ones that made a difference and you weren't ever able to say how much they made a difference, right? So my Aunt Joan was the type of person that was, that felt rough if you didn't know her. But that was because she was like the equivalent of Joe Clark, but as an elementary school principal. For any of you who have seen Lynn on me, you know what that means. But she was tough and demanding and required everything out of you. Uh, she was the first person to take me to a college on a visit. She was the first person to teach me how to play cards. And when I say teach me how to play cards, she taught me how to play Tunk and Pinochle and Blackjack and Spades and every single game that could be found. And it meant a lot. She was, she was the, the last of, of my mom's siblings, the last of her immediate relatives. And it's been hard. It's been hard dealing with this anytime but especially during a global pandemic when you can't get together and commensurate, where you can't go hug each other, where you can't do those kind of things, but where you have to take turns going through the people you've lost stuff, where you have to look through her bills and, and all those things, and you learn things about them that you didn't know, things that you didn't take time to know about all the charities that she donated to, all the causes that she was involved in. And she spent th more than 30 years as an educator in Detroit Public Schools, and she taught a lot of people. She made a huge difference, and, and when I go out and I see folks, they say, oh, Joan Gibbs is your aunt? She's the reason I'm still in school, or she got my crazy cousin sorted out, and that's the legacy of educators. But she was an incredibly humble woman. Uh, and when I say humble, it, it, it's kind of weird, because anybody who would know her would, would consider her a boisterous, like, force of nature. But I didn't know that she had a PhD until we were doing this stuff. And my mom said, yeah, she didn't really talk about it. You know, I didn't know all the things that, she, all the awards, the stuff, until I had to draft a tribute about my aunt. The idea that I didn't know all the things that she had done, because to her, it didn't matter. What mattered to her was what I was doing. It mattered whether or not I was working hard enough. It mattered whether she could help me, how she could help me. And I think back to, to, to my campaign for the Senate and she invited me to, to her lunches. She has these lunches with retired educators where they, you know, eat lunch and play cards. And so we, we took a photo at, at La Dosha Vita with about nine or ten of, of these ladies, all, all retired educators. And that's the photo that I used. That, that was the photo where I think about her. And I got a call from one of my black club leaders when that, that piece went out, and he said, this is the best piece of me I've ever seen. He said, these are some good looking ladies. I would like to date some of them. And, you know, I kind of chuckled because my aunt is, is holding my shoulders in, in support of me and, and in that moment. And I know that that's what she's going to be doing forever, is that she's going to be holding me and looking forward and encouraging. And that's what we have. And so tomorrow we're going to have a funeral that'll be unlike any funeral that many of us have ever had to attend because I'll be one of 20 people because that's what capacity is. We're not going to have a repass because the friends we know who have had them have had COVID outbreaks. The, the, like, it's just crazy. There's no good way to deal with these moments except to cleave to the people you love and you care about. And we can't do that this year. We can't do that now. And it hurts. It's terrible. It's the worst feeling in the world not to be able to run to my mom and give her a hug and say, I love you and I'm gonna be here, but I couldn't and I can't and I don't know when we're gonna be able to, but God, if we could just reach out to the people we love, if we could just tell them we care, if we could do those kind of things because she was on my list of people to call and she had taken a fall and she was in a nursing home and I was like, oh, I'm gonna call her tomorrow and work came up and I didn't call her. And in these moments, there's so much stuff to be done but the time we have with the people we love is so limited, it's so finite. And especially in these times, the issues and the things that we think are so big are not that important. So I hope that we spend that time reaching out to the people we care about, the relationships that matter, and the people we love. Because I lost someone and will never be able to talk to her again.